Good morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Our uh, order of worship this morning is Matins, found on page 219. And uh, we don't do, well, if you come to the early morning stuff, you do matins quite often because we do it four days a week. But if you haven't been to that, you probably haven't done a matin service since last Thanksgiving. <laughs> so um, just kind of pay attention to the flow of the service. Uh, I'll try to announce when we go back and forth between the hymnal uh, and our bulletin so that we all kind of stay on the same page. But we do start right away with responses. We don't start with a hymn. So if you want to turn to page 219, That'll be beneficial so that I'm not the only one saying the response. (laughs) All right, I invite you please to rise. O Lord, open my lips, my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. <clears throat> Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. O come, let us see to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God, and we and we are the people of His pasture and the. Sh- Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. We read responsibly our introit as found in our bulletins. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. Mm -hmm. 
When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our office hymn for this morning is hymn 892, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. start our readings, just a reminder, there is a responsory. Uh, after each reading, I say, O oh Lord, have mercy upon us, and you reply with thanks be to God. Sometimes we forget that because that's not normally what we do, but there is a responsory after each reading. Our Old Testament reading for this, the day of thanksgiving, is from Deuteronomy chapter 8. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you, and let you hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, 
But man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in His ways and by fearing Him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land He has given you. O Lord, have mercy on us. We read responsively our gradual is found in our bulletins. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. O give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 4. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. And I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. Even in Thessalonica you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Ephroditus the gift you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, Have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Lord, have mercy on us. We continue with the responsory found on the bottom of page 221. 
Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, the place where your glory dwells. You may be seated. Our hymn of the day for today is hymn 785, We Praise You, O God. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. William Bradford, the governor of the Plymouth Colony, announced, To all ye pilgrims, inasmuch as the Great Father has given us this year an abundant harvest of Indian corn, wheat, beans, squashes, and garden vegetables, and has made the forest to abound with game and sea with fish and clams, and inasmuch as he has protected us from the ravages of the savages. He has spared us from pestilence and disease, has granted us freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our own conscience. Now I, your magistrate, do proclaim that all ye pilgrims with your wives and little ones do gather at ye meeting house on ye hill between the hours of nine and noon in the daytime on Thursday, November 29th of the year of our Lord, 1,623, and third year since ye pilgrims landed on ye pilgrim rock, there to listen to ye pastor, did you catch that part? And render thanksgiving to ye almighty God for all his blessings. I don't know if you know this, but now we're going to extend the service till noon, because that's what he said, right? Nine until noon, three hours. Everybody ready? Yeah? Okay. 
So that was given by the guy that was in charge of Plymouth Rock, the very first Thanksgiving. In 1779, George Washington issued the first national Thanksgiving proclamation. President Washington wrote, Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor, whereas both the houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend next to be devoted by the people of the states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country. George Washington, asked by both houses of the Congress to give a proclamation, setting aside a day to give thanks to God. Could you imagine anything like that happening today? We can't even get the two houses of our government to agree on anything, let alone give something to the president to have him agree on it. And certainly we wouldn't talk about God in any of those things. But that's not our history, friends. It's striking, though, that both of these proclamations involve looking back on the past. Both encourage the hearers to consider what God has already done for them. In order to give thanks, we have to look back and see what God has accomplished in our lives so that we can express to Him all of those things. A day of national thanksgiving is a time when many families come together, especially for that purpose. In a number of homes today, folks will pause and tell what they are thankful for, the blessings that they have received. In our Old Testament lesson, Moses commanded the people of Israel to do this very thing. Moses writes, And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness, that He might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep His commandments or not. And He humbled you and let you hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these 40 years. Israel, before they crossed into the promised land, was told to remember what the Lord had done for them during their time in the wilderness. To remember how He took care of them, even though they grumbled and complained. How He led them and protected them all those long years. Not once did the Lord give up on them, even as they gave up on Him. We would do well to follow this example of thanksgiving to God, not just at this time of year. It's easy to take time to give thanks when a whole day is devoted and built into our schedules for that very thing. Perhaps it's a bit more challenging to give thanks regularly. But don't be anxious. God's Word has a built-in way that helps us give thanks to the Lord each and every day. In fact, many times a day. Our text for our epistle begins, In everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. How many of us here pray? I I hope all of you pray. (laughs) It's kind of what Christians do. It's actually one of our greatest weapons against the devil is prayer. So most of us pray, right? I would imagine that most of us speak to the Lord many times a day. I venture to guess that most of our prayer time is spent making supplications or requests for ourselves or for other people. But did you notice what God's Word says? How our prayers are to be offered. We let our requests may be made known to God by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It's not just a prayer and a request by itself. And it's not just a thanksgiving by itself. It's a prayer and a request with thanksgiving. You could say they go together like mashed potatoes and gravy, or maybe turkey and stuffing, or my personal favorite, of which my wife has made me too, whipped cream and pumpkin pie. 
Listen to how one of our early church fathers, St. John Chrysostom, explains this. Chrysostom writes, God does not wish that a prayer be merely a petition, but a thanksgiving for what we have received. How can one make petitions for the future without a thankful acknowledgement of past things? Why do we continue to pray to God? Why do we ask Him, as the Catechism says, as dear children ask of their dear Father? We do those things because we know how God has treated us in the past. If in the past God totally ignored us, if He never listened to our prayers, if He never blessed us with what is best for us, even if we didn't think it was best for us at the time, why would we go to Him for anything? We pray to God because He is the God who has helped us in the past. He has blessed us with our present and He has promised to be there for us in our future. We are so thankful for what God has done for us that we tell Him so. And that gives us reason for approaching His throne of grace with our current requests. For example, look at the collect of the day that we'll pray shortly. It begins by sharing with God our thanks for what He has already done in the past. It starts, Almighty God, Your mercies are new every morning, and You graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. That is what God has done. New mercies from Him every day that we experience. The needs of body and soul met in the past, and because of His faithfulness, in faith we know that God would grant us His Holy Spirit so that we can acknowledge His goodness and give thanks for His benefits, and that we can then serve Him in willing obedience all our days. When we approach our Heavenly Father in prayer, we do so remembering what He has done for us. And the highlight, obviously, of what God has done for us is saving us from our sins, from death and from Satan's tyranny. We approach God in prayer for the sake of Jesus, our Savior, who died and rose so that we would have access to the Father by the blood of His own Son. And that is why we are not anxious when we pray. That's why we don't need to fear being ignored by God. In faith, we see what God has done in our past. He has saved us. He made us His children through the waters of holy baptism. He taught us the Christian faith through His Word. He gives us His Son's very body and blood with the bread and the wine and the sacrament of the altar. And once again, as the Catechism says, He does this out of purely out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy. And He gives us our body and soul. Our eyes and our ears, all our members, our reason and all of our senses. And He still takes care of them. He gives us clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals and all that we have. And He richly and daily provides us with all that we need to support this body and life. He defends us against all danger. He guards and He protects us from all evil. The result of God's gracious favor to us through Jesus Christ, is peace. That peace which rises above all understanding. That peace which guards our hearts and our minds in Christ. And that peace comes from God when we offer our prayers to Him with thanksgiving. It is the peace that for the sake of Jesus, our Father hears our prayers and answers them according to His perfect will. It is the peace that comes from knowing that God is for us so that no one can be against us. It is the peace of sins forgiven, the peace of eternal life granted, the peace of a home with the Lord eternally in His presence. As we celebrate God's gifts of body, soul, and spirit this Thanksgiving day, as we regularly give Him thanks, as we pray to Him each day with faith and trust in Jesus, as we receive with great joy and comfort His peace and love, know that He has been gracious to you in the past. So He will continue to love and bless you and keep you in the future. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, and His steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We turn to page 223 and sing together the Te Deum.
We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The Father of an infinite majesty, your adorable true and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in the glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you and we worship your name for ever and ever. Grant, O oh Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us have mercy upon us. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. We continue with the Curie on page 227. <clears throat> Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. 
customary on not only Thanksgiving Day, but also on Ash Wednesday, that for the prayers of the church, we pray what is known as the litany. So if you turn to page 288 in the front of your hymnals, you will see the litany. We've prayed this before. It's a responsive prayer, um, and so there's kind of a rhythm to it. 288 in your hymnals. And as usual, I will say the leader's portion, and I ask that you respond with the bolded congregation's portion. Page 288, we pray. O Lord, O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, God the Father in heaven, God the Son, Redeemer of the world, God the Holy Spirit, be gracious to us, Be gracious to us from all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, we poor sinners implore you, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed, to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all, to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, O Lord. We continue with the Lord's Prayer back on 227. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. We pray together the prayer of the day is found in your bulletins. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, 
and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Our closing hymn today is hymn 895, Now Thank We All Our God. and hands and voices who wondrous things has done everybody. No announcements this morning. We'll see you on Sunday. Have a wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.